let's discuss the Chinese medical theory, the reconstructing TCM. TCM theory presents a number of problems for the scientists. It employs complex concepts like qi and plan that have multiple and often somewhat obscure meanings. It reduces anatomy to a set of organs that are in fact functional systems and not somatic structures as we understand them in modern anatomy and a network of meridians, channels that had been painstakingly mapped out in medical manuals that had never been isolated in human day sections. Its account of human physiology reduces it to simplified models of relationship among organs, meridians, and body fluids. A system of medicine based on anatomy anatomical and physiological model so much at variance with modern medical knowledge of human body cannot expect to be taken seriously unless there is evidence that its apparent obvious uh, theoretical base aside. It works as an effective tool of diagnosis and therapy for at least for some illnesses. Based on the history of Chinese medicine in providing health care from ancient to modern times, there is a prima facie case of sup supposing that it provides healing for some ailments. Any experienced doctor would concede that some folk remedies do work and that a few old wives' tales are true. There can be little doubt, for example, that the herb duong radix et rhizome ray used for constipation can induce purging as anyone who puts a large dose would rapidly discover or that Huang Herba XPJ helps reduce perspiration and alleviate fevers. Its derivative drain is now extensively used in Western medical medications. But for most Chinese medical treatment, even when these treatments are followed by patient recovery, the, the question still remains whether the patient would have not got better without treatment or whether only a placebo effect was at work. Hence, there is a need to study these treatments through appropriate clinical trials. There is also the possibility that the treatment works for some but not for most of the ailments for which it makes claims. Bloodletting was practiced in Chinese medicine and also in Europe based on the now defunct Galenic theory of body humors for almost 2,000 years before it fell into this repute in the late 19th century. Yet, it is used by modern medicine today as a life-saving method of treatment for a very limited number of blood-related illness, such as hemochromatosis, lupulis, septemia, rubia, rubra vera. Bloodletting therapeutic lobotomy was used to treat hereditary hemochromatosis in which there is slow excessive iron buildup in the body, causing damage to organs such as the liver, heart, and joints. Regularly reducing the volume of blood in the body is also currently the main treatment for polycythemia rubrabera in which the blood becomes much too to increasing the risk of clots and sleep. Lebotomy can also help people who are producing too many red cells because their bodies are starved of oxygen owing to a heart or lung problem. Small amount of bloodletting can be still used by some Chinese physicians to temporarily relieve conditions with hypertension, although with the availability of modern drugs, this has now come to be regarded as a primitive and risky uh, infection-prone method of treatment. The challenge then for believers in TCM is to tease out this condition for which they can be demonstrated through a clinical trial to work consistently. TCM is not unlike Hippocratic or Galenic medicine practice in ancient Greece or Rome and medieval Europe, except that the Chinese continued using it to modern times and arguably may well have developed a better system. It is worthy of note that in modern Europe, enough useful knowledge in Gal Galen's work were considered to exist, so these works continued to be studied in medical schools in England in the first half of the 20th century. 
in flight because of some of Galen's method were still valid and useful. Likewise, the same theory means concept and simple models may have captured some essential aspect of human physiology in some fuzzy holistic way such that it works for some ailments. Thank you for your attention.